Cryptocurrency. It sure is freaking confusing, wouldn't you agree? At the same time, a lot of people are making a lot of money. Also, at the same time, a lot of people are losing their shirts. How do you become the former and not the latter? No, not latter, latter. You know, the last one. In any case, find out coming up. The investment world is full of multiple options of instruments you can buy to possibly increase your wealth. There are simple to understand investment vehicles like real estate, restaurants or other types of franchises, even things like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, index funds, ETFs, and REITs for those type of asset classes. You basically put your money in them with a little bit of upkeep required, but generally speaking, they all increase in value for the most part. And with a little bit of management, you can have more money than what you spent. Some of them are a little bit hard to comprehend in that they are baskets of other things. Generally speaking, your standard investor can understand what the heck they're doing and just put their money in and they should increase in value. You know, if the market is going up and lose value if the market's going down. But then there are complex instruments. Vehicles like options, collateralized debt obligations, forex markets, futures, hedge funds, hybrid securities and notes, infrastructure investments, investments and insurance bonds, stapled securities, things of that nature that even your seasoned investor will balk at and stay away from. Pretty much, you need a case of Pepto-Bismol, a strong sense of danger, and a death wish to deal with all those types of investments. And then there's cryptocurrency, the mother of all complex investment instruments. There are people that can't even comprehend what on earth it is. How is it that you can make money off of bits on a computer? It is the ultimate risk for some in that they can't and won't ever understand it and therefore won't risk putting their money in it. But it doesn't have to be that way. It is actually a simple concept to understand. Let's get into it. Before we do, Let's start with a little bit of history. The value of most currency used to be pegged to precious metals. The United States had been on a de facto gold standard since the 1830s and a de jure gold standard since 1900. In 1913, the gold standard was built into the framework of the Federal Reserve. The 1913 law required the Federal Reserve to hold gold equal to 40% of the value of the currency it issued. Technically termed the Federal Reserve note, but colloquially called the dollar. It also was required to convert those dollars into gold at a fixed price of $20.67 per ounce of pure gold. The Federal Reserve typically held more than enough gold to back the currency it had issued. Bankers called the excess free gold. The Federal Reserve needed a stock of free gold sufficient to satisfy redemption requests that might occur in the near future. The Federal Reserve could increase the stock of free gold by increasing interest rates, which encouraged Americans to deposit in banks and encouraged foreigners to invest in the United States shifting gold from the pockets of the public, both here and abroad, to the vaults of Federal Reserve District and member banks. Conversely, when the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates, gold would flow from their coffers into the hands of public, both at home and overseas. Richard Nixon, Tricky Dick, ended the dollar's convertibility to gold in 1971 to help combat inflation, which was rampant in the US at the time, which kind of illustrates the problem that cryptocurrencies aim to solve. There's too much manipulation of currencies by governments of all kinds that end up hurting the everyday person, mostly in terms of inflation. Things of that nature have led to bad bouts of inflation in the US and other countries, and to hyperinflation in some countries. Cryptocurrency advocates claim that cryptographic tokens promise to become the first hard and non-manipulatable money for the whole world. Many say that in the future, one or perhaps a basket of cryptocurrencies could be a substitute for the euro, dollar, yen, yuan, and so on becoming the first free and hard world currency. What cryptocurrencies are have a lot to do with the technology they're based on. Broadly speaking, a cryptocurrency is a digital currency that is encrypted and often decentralized. Bitcoin, the first and most recognizable cryptocurrency by far, is based on blockchain technology, a permanent decentralized ledger system. What is a ledger system? What is a blockchain? You can think of a blockchain as a sort of database that exists on every user's device. Sort of like an app on your cell phone or computer. Except this app would exist on every user that owns this cryptocurrency. In this database exists every transaction that's ever occurred for the currency for every user ever. It also contains the value of every account, including your own. The idea is that since it's so decentralized, it makes it much harder to manipulate. It also encourages users to verify transactions and thus encourages honesty. The jury's still out on that, but that's the idea. Why do people invest in cryptocurrency at all? Well, there are lots of benefits that come with investing in cryptocurrencies. 
Here are the primary reasons why you or maybe someone else would choose to invest in cryptocurrency. Easy and secure transactions. With cryptocurrencies, it's easier than ever for you to send money to someone else in a secure way. Cryptocurrencies are exchanged with the help of both public and private keys. This approach keeps things secure and also helps to keep transfer fees low. At this point, it seems we all know someone, or know someone who knows someone, who has made it big investing in Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency. While you might not become a billionaire by buying Bitcoin, you can experience some pretty high returns. That said, cryptocurrency can be quite volatile. And because of that volatility, the potential is there for you to earn large amounts of money from it. The key though is to make sure you're buying the right coins. Now while Bitcoin is the most popular and most valuable cryptocurrency out there, it's led to the creation of thousands of alternative or altcoins. There are all different kinds of altcoins. Some are close variations of Bitcoin, like Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin Diamond. Others focus on privacy, like Monero and Zcash. Some are named after Greek gods, Apollo currency, or even internet memes. It's a weird and wild world. Most people only have interest in holding onto Bitcoins or another popular currency, Ethereum. Still, there are some speculators who attempt to buy low and sell high on more obtuse, obscure cryptocurrencies. Now their aim is to get rich quick by getting in early on the next Bitcoin and dumping as quickly as possible. Let me help dissuade you of that notion immediately. If you're hoping to get rich quick by buying an obscure altcoin, then I have some primo beachfront property in Montana for you that is probably more suitable for your investment tastes and risk appetite. What was that about a fool and his money? In any case, regardless of what currency you invest in, the common denominator is volatility. Any cryptocurrency has value only as long as people perceive it to have value. While this is technically true of any currency, it's more pertinent with cryptocurrencies because they aren't backed by a government or a precious metal, like gold. This makes them a much riskier investment, as many investors and speculators have learned the hard way. So you know not to get scammed when buying altcoins or bitcoins, but how do you get in on the investment? In simple terms, you need a place to buy it and a place to put it. The most popular place to purchase cryptocurrencies are on cryptocurrency exchanges. There are several different exchanges to choose from, with the most popular being Coinbase, GDX, and bit the next. These exchanges allow you to purchase currencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum with a debit card. With most popular currencies, including Bitcoin, you can buy fractions of a coin so you don't need to invest thousands of dollars to get into the game. Before you decide to buy through a particular exchange, do your research and make sure it's a trustworthy exchange. There are lots of questionable exchanges popping up these days, and you could end up getting scammed if you're not careful. Keep note of the theme here. Lots of people get scammed with Bitcoin for some reason. And there's lots of scammers out there. It's kind of the wild, wild west. So just keep in mind, you need to be very careful with these things. If you're interested in purchasing altcoins, odds are you'll need some Bitcoin or Ethereum to make your purchase. As a general rule, not a captain rule, a general rule, you can't buy altcoins with fiat currency. That's how crypto enthusiasts and gold bugs actually prefer to paper money like dollars or euros. But that may change in the near future. You never know. Exchanges make money by charging fees for conducting transactions. There are other websites you can visit to interact directly with other users who are looking to sell cryptocurrencies. Local Bitcoin is one popular example. The process will likely be more drawn out than with an exchange, and there is the added risk of dealing directly with a stranger, whose currency you can't verify. If you're new to cryptocurrency, you'll likely want to just use an exchange. Another option that's becoming more prevalent is the Bitcoin ATM. There are more than 4,000 cryptocurrency ATM locations in 76 countries today. You can use them to purchase Bitcoins and send them to your wallet. Now, when we say send it to your wallet, we don't mean you put your Bitcoin into an actual wallet. To store your currency, you need a cryptocurrency wallet, which is necessary to securely store the code that makes up your cryptocurrency portfolio. You can have either a software wallet or a hardware wallet. Software wallets are necessary to enable active trading as they make accessing your currency that much easier. If you sign up for a Coinbase account, you automatically receive a Coinbase software wallet. Hardware wallets are physical devices. They can resemble USB devices or external hard drives, and they are more secure than software ones. You may have some people try to convince you to use a mobile wallet for your currencies. That's not the best approach, however. Mobile devices are easy to compromise, and your currencies will not be as secure as they would be in a software or hardware wallet. So yeah, don't do that. You can use hardware wallets for currency that you don't expect needing frequent or easy access to. You want to think of a hardware wallet like a savings account, whereas a software wallet is more like your checking account. You need to be sure to prepare yourself for the ups and downs of the cryptocurrency market as well. 
Like we said earlier, cryptocurrency is very volatile. Do not expect the cryptocurrency that you have today to hold the same value for a week or even a day. It, like I said, it's very volatile. With that in mind, don't invest more in cryptocurrency than you're willing to lose. And you need to steal yourself for the possibility that the value of your coins could tank significantly. If you prepare for this risk now, you'll be less likely to act out of emotion or make rash decisions later. So there's something else that you need to know about cryptocurrencies in general. Cryptocurrencies are currencies. If you think you're going to put 5 10 or $15 in a cryptocurrency today and become a billionaire tomorrow, I got a rude awakening for you. In reality, it's just a currency like the dollar bill or the euro. The thing that a cryptocurrency is hedging against is the idea that a dollar or a euro will eventually tank its value, similar to what a Zimbabwe dollar or a Zimbabwe pound or a Venezuelan peso has done. Imagine for a second that you bought $15 worth of cryptocurrency today and the dollar tanked, and now you have whatever the value would be for $15 worth of cryptocurrency in the future once the dollar is tanked. You really only still have that $15 worth of cryptocurrency. So you're not necessarily any richer than when you were when you had dollars. The point that I'm trying to get across is just holding on to a cryptocurrency is not necessarily an investment strategy. You want to purchase with dollars, euros, or cryptocurrencies, assets that appreciate in value. Just holding on to that money, just like if you're holding on to a dollar in a bank, is not necessarily going to make you richer. You need to make sure that you keep investing, even if it's with a cryptocurrency. Now that said, be sure to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. We got great videos coming up on different investment topics and technology topics. I need you guys to stay locked in. Keep it real. We'll be back. Peace.